With so many seemingly good calendar options out there, can I honestly say Google Calendar is the best choice? Yes, I think I can. Stick around and I'll show you why. Steve Dotto here. On Dotto Tech, we make tech easy so you can do more. More what? <laughs> well, those windows aren't gonna clean themselves now, are they? Oh yeah, please, subscribe to this channel, and while you're at it, remember to, to hit the notification bell so that you hear about all of our upcoming videos, which we produce about three a week. Now today's topic is Google Calendar, and there, as I mentioned, there are a lot of ch good choices out there for calendars, uh, but I prefer Google Calendar for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is how ubiquitous the Google Calendar is. The fact that it lives in the cloud and we can access it from any of our devices all the time makes it a terrific choice. Now, other calendars will also allow you to do that, but there's just a certain je ne sais quoi to Google Calendar that makes it work for me. Now, if you haven't spent any time with Google Calendar, let me just give you a quick overview of the tool itself. I've got my Google Calendar up in front of us here and you can see uh, my month at a glance here looking at the entire month. Of course, Google Calendar on the desktop, we're looking at it in the browser now, is broken, it breaks the screen down into a couple of simple areas. Uh, in the center, it's dominated by the calendar itself. And just as you would expect, we can view the calendar as a month at a glance. We can do a quick switch here to week at a glance. You can go to day. Uh, you've got lots of different options as far as viewing the Google Calendar. Now, you might see that my calendar is an explosion of color. That's because I have multiple calendars loaded. With Google Calendar, and with most online calendars, you don't need to have just a single calendar for everything. You can have multiple calendars and you can actually turn on and off the view to those multiple calendars so that you can see the information that's relevant for you at a time. If you look over here on the left-hand side of my screen, you can see the list of my calendars and I only have two turned on right now. I've got my main calendar, which I use for all of my appointments, and then I've got my webinar schedule, which is well where we keep all of our upcoming webinars. But then I am also have turned on several other calendars. Now those are other people who are important to me in my life's calendar. So such as my wife or, or my business colleagues. Also, calendars that are generated by different apps and different tools we use. So we've got a variety of different calendars coming in, but the bottom line is the calendar's goal is to keep me organized, to allow me to quickly see what my obligations and responsibilities are and, and, to, and to be able to address them as, as they come up. So that's you know the nature of the calendar. Now, humor me for a moment. because you, If you want to just get into the demo where I go over all of how Google Calendar works, you can jump ahead. We'll put a link in so that you can jump ahead in the demo. But I want to talk to you briefly about one of what I think the biggest challenges with calendars is. And that's the fact that we have too many calendars. I'm not talking about too many calendars for different tasks, but I'm talking about two different too many different calendar technologies that we use. Because here's, here's what typically happens, is you may, might have Outlook or Google Calendar running for work or for your personal life. So you've got a calendar that's running and that's based on either Microsoft or Google service or somebody else. But then you buy a smartphone, maybe you buy an iPhone, maybe you buy an Android phone, a Samsung, let's say, and built into that phone is a calendar app. And you start, and you can sync that calendar app to your existing calendar, and we, we do that often. But now what happens is you've got your Samsung or your iCal calendar running on your smartphone, and all of your information is being entered there. And you have to trust that the integration between that calendar and your other calendar, your main calendar that you say use on your desktop computer, stays seamless, works, and doesn't break through upgrades of operating systems and revisions of the software. And that never happens. There's always hiccups along the way, which drive you crazy because you've forgotten at some point which calendar you're using. You just use the calendar and you don't actually think about the technology that's driving the calendar. So then you have to sleuth your way back to figure out why your calendar, why some appointments are missing from your calendar and it can cause a fair bit of disruption in your life. All of that goes away if you commit to a single calendar format. If you commit to Outlook or Google Calendar, or Yahoo Calendar, or some calendar format, and then you make sure you use the native apps for that on all of your devices. So I use the Google Calendar app on my iPhone, on my iPad, I, I use it on the browser, on my desktop computer, so I use that calendar. I don't allow the phone or my iPad to default to the iCal or to Apple's calendar. I say, no, no, no. 
We are not doing that. We are using Google Calendar in this particular instance. And then I make sure that I enter my information into Google Calendar. And that to me is the biggest step forward. All of the other integration, how well it integrates with all of the other Google tools, that's icing on the cake. The bottom line is that I have a single place that I go to that all of my calendar information is, and that's not going to break through upgrades or changing gear. It's a subtle difference, but it's a big deal, and it will at some point make a difference for you. I'm going to get off my soapbox now, and let's talk about the technology itself and the Google Calendar itself, because it's they've done a lot of work in updating it. And one of the real nice aspects is how nicely it integrates with the rest of the Google tools. If you use Gmail, if you use Google Maps, uh, Google Assistant, especially if you have Google Home, it starts to integrate with all of those really nicely, giving you a, an ecosystem that you can work with and that you can take advantage of. Now, let me, I think the best way to show you is to show you how you actually go about adding appointments and seeing the different features that are built in. So with Google Calendar, they've really updated it to look a lot more like the mobile app and down to the point of this little plus sign down here, which we, if we click on, will launch a new appointment for us or so create an event. So let's create an event for ourselves and go through and see exactly what happens. So this is me setting an appointment up of some sort. So you can set up the appointment, whatever it is, and I'm, we're going to say it's going to be lunch with Dan because I'm going to have lunch with my buddy. Now, we can, of course, set the time, set the day, whether it's an all day or not event. Now, one nice thing is you can set repeating events. So if you want to put into your calendar the certain day that you pay a bill or the certain day that you always go to do X, Y, Z, that you meet with your buddies every second Wednesday morning, you can set all of those sorts of criteria in the repeat column here within the, or the repeat option within Google Calendar. So that gives you some nice functionality as you move ahead. Here's where we start to see the integration with other Google tools. So let's say that we are going to meet for lunch every day at Traverna, or I'm going to be meeting uh, Dan for lunch at a local restaurant, Traverna, if I can spell it right, Gorgona. There it is. So that's where I'm going to meet him for lunch. Now, this is cool. The integration here with the map means that when I go to look at the appointment on my phone, It'll automatically tell me how far I am away from the appointment. It'll tell me how long it's going to take me to get there. If I need driving directions, it will incorporate all of the driving directions. It basically uses the integration in the Google ecosystem between the calendar app now and the mapping app to help facilitate and to make my life a little bit better and a little bit easier. This sort of thing is, I think, pretty profound when you choose a tool like Google Calendar at the at kind of at the heart of your organizational system, because as it evolves, it can then pull other information from the Google ecosystem. So imagine that you've got an appointment at a doctor that's 20 minutes away from your home. Google knows you're at home. He knows the appointment's at 2:20, but it also recognizes because Google Maps is constantly now monitoring what traffic situations are that there's a lot of congestion on the road. So it's going to probably take you 30 minutes to get there when you th would normally think it would take 20 minutes. Now what can happen is Google will actually let you know you should be leaving a few minutes early because of the congestion. It's this kind of benefit that you're going to get by going with a single ecosystem and using a tool like Google Calendar. Now there is a, I will admit, a slight creep factor to that entire scenario, but you see the overall benefit to your productivity and to the efficiency in which you lead your life by tying all of these different tools together this way. Uh, going through the rest of the organization, we can see we can add conferencing. Now in the Google paid apps, I think you can add more conferencing options. Right now it just adds Hangouts. It'd be nice to be able to add, add conferencing tools like Skype or Zoom. Uh, but right now it just adds, uh, it, it just adds the, uh, the, the Hangouts uh, for quickly creating a conference. But if you look down here in the very bottom, you can now add a full HTML field. So you can put in links to conferencing software, you can add instructions, you can add links to websites and stuff that people should be reading before they are meeting with you. You can keep meeting notes in it. So you've got a whole bunch of additional functionality built in now because we have this text field, this full, actually fully editable text field that you can highlight creating ordered lists, all of that stuff right here. Uh, before that, we also see that we can change which calendar 
it is being applied to because we can assign it to multiple calendars. All of the calendars that we own, we can apply this to. You can ask for notification that, you know, t- give me 10 minutes before all of my appointments to give me a warning on that. Uh, you can have it turned on or off on your calendar as far as visibility. And this is kind of a subtle thing, but imagine that you just wanted to know that your uh, maybe maybe you just wanted kind of a, you didn't want your calendar to say that you were busy, but you wanted to know that this was the time that your daughter was taking her piano test. And so that you wanted to be able to text her immediately afterwards to ask her how it went, but you don't want it blocked off on your calendar, but you want to know when she was there. This allows you to say whether you're busy or not with different appointments that you put in your calendar. As I say, subtle, but pretty profound as far as not blocking off your time and still helping you be more aware of what's happening in your world. Let's see the next level of integrations we go over into the guests. Typically speaking, with our calendar, we're often making appointments with others. And we've all received meeting invitations or appointment invitations via email that will automatically populate into our calendars. This is where that happens over here in the add guest area. And there's some really extra, really neat extra benefits that can be incorporated here. Now, if I wanted to book a meeting just with April, I click on that and I can say, I want to set the time. I want this to to happen and it'll send an invite. It'll send an email invite for her to accept or to reject. But take a look at what happens if I do the same with somebody who I have a shared calendar with. I'm sharing my wife's calendar, knowing I'm sharing her main work calendar. So it knows what her appointments are. And if I add an appointment with Shannon saying, Shannon, we got to go do something. And I put her here, it will allow suggested times where it looks at my calendar and her calendar looks for the busy times, blocks those off on both of our calendars, and then gives us gives me a list of times that work as far as Google can tell on both of our calendars. So this streamlines the way to efficiency. Now, if you have multiple people that you're trying to book an appointment with, this is a real benefit because it will slowly start to winnow down the available slots to ones that are that you have a chance of actually booking the meeting. It's no guarantee that they don't have something else booked for that time, but it gives you the best chance of actually booking the meeting without going back and forth too often. So we see a lot of benefits to, again, using the entire Google ecosystem in the guest area. So really, is Google Calendar the best choice for your calendar? Well, obviously, I don't know. But it is a good choice for your calendar. And I think regardless of which calendar you ultimately choose, if you follow the premise that I was talking about earlier, where you look for a single calendar that you can run in native app form on both your smartphone and your desktop computer. So you're using a single calendar for all, or at least a single calendar technology. For all of your appointment and calendaring options, I think you're way ahead of the game. I think people run into a lot of trouble when they use Outlook Calendar at work and Google Calendar at home, and then they start putting appointments and they get them a little bit mixed up and they've got too many different places that their obligations live. Simplify your life, pick one calendar, master it, and make it work. That is the best advice that I can give you from today. Would love to hear your thoughts. Comments and suggestions here on Dotto Tech are always welcome. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.